After making my latest skirt, I am convinced that everyone needs to have that showstopper in their closet. Let me share with you my make. I'm Mari with Mari Sews and thanks for hanging with me. So over here, I like to share all things sewing. Um, I like to share the garments that I make, mostly for myself, as well as share fabric hauls, pattern hauls, give you some tips and tricks about how I fit things and just share all sewing related things. And so if that sounds like it's up your alley, I'm glad you're here. So today I actually want to tell you all about my showstopper skirt that I made for Ankara Appreciation Week. Now, just a quick note on Ankara Appreciation Week. This is actually hosted by Juliet Uzor and Lena King. I'll link to their information down below so that you can check them out, but they really, just want to bring awareness to this fabric. And let me tell you, this week has been absolutely inspirational. Just seeing everyone's pictures and the things that they've made, it's so much fun. So let's talk fabric. This purple fabric right here, um, I actually picked this up from African Eleganza over here in Maryland. And then I used this Assyria poem that I got from House of Mami Wata. I chose to use both of these fabrics together because they both have a hint of purple. Well, this one's definitely purple, right? But this one has that hint. And so I felt like it would help bring it up. Plus, there's a nice pop of color. I mean, I just love this greenish teal. It's just so beautiful. So I thought these fabrics would go well together. Now, both of my ankras are about 44 inches wide. So the main reason why I ended up using the Assyria Palm for the overskirt on Vogue 1683 is because, well, there are seams and the skirt just does all kinds of things. And I felt that if I use the busier print, even if I had to cobble some pieces together because it was so narrow to get an, a complete pattern piece out of it, I thought it would be okay because the pattern would hide that. And in fact, that's what happened. So you can see here that for this pattern piece right here of the skirt, I actually had to cobble it together. So I, I cut two pieces, sewed it together. And on this side, you can't even really tell where it is. I mean, it just really blends in. And so I'm really happy with that decision. I felt like it worked out for me. Had I chosen to do that in this fabric, it would have been much more difficult to match up this, this print because it's directional and there's so many lines going through it. It's, it's not as, it's not as busy as this one is. So you would definitely see the seams in that more. So that's just something to keep an eye out for. If you don't have wide enough fabric or if you're just shy and you need just a bit more and you need to cobble a pattern piece together, try using a busier print that doesn't have a direction so that way it's it blends right in. So let's talk about this pattern real quick. So Vogue 1683 does have two different looks. It has the skirt, um, which the bottom skirt, <laughs> which is actually the same on both patterns. And then the other view has a beautiful overlay. It's kind of, it's got like some asymmetry going on. It's really lovely attached to that bottom skirt. In my version, I actually made that upper part detachable and I'll tell you how I did that. Now that bottom skirt is actually fully lined and it has a facing. I opted not to line my skirt because my skirt isn't sheer at all and it is double-sided. So even if you like look and see the other side of the skirt, it still looks really beautiful. So I use the facings and one layer of skirt and saved a whole lot of fabric. <laughs> Sizing wise, this pattern really doesn't go up to accommodate my size. My hips right now are 50 inches. My waist is 35, 36, depending on how good I'm eating. So that means that I had to take the largest size here, which was a 22 and add some additional inches actually. After taking a look at the finished measurements, I decided that I was gonna use the size 22 and then add an additional two inches to the pattern overall 
to accommodate my hips, knowing that I was going to have to go in and remove some of that additional length that I added at the waist. And you all, let me just tell you, it's really simple to make this kind of adjustments and keep moving forward. For this pattern in particular, this is one of the um, wrapped sides and it does have two different wrap sides. So you see here, there's a two different ones. For this piece, I went ahead and I cut right down that center front, avoiding the darts. So right down the center, I cut the pattern piece and then I went ahead and taped a piece of paper underneath, spreading the two pattern pieces by one inch. Now, I like to use wrapping paper that has the grid marks on the back because the grid marks are an inch. And so that actually helps with the alignment of this. And then I also did it with the skirt back, but in the back, because you have two back pieces that get sewn together, I only added a half inch here onto that middle seam, which is the straight seam. And so again, I avoided making any changes to the darts here. I added the extra length here. And overall, because this gets doubled, because you're cutting two of these pieces, I got my additional two inches that I needed. I also made similar adjustments to the over layered skirt pieces as well. Don't forget about that if you're making that view. To get the best fit for this skirt on me, I went ahead and just wrapped it around my body, pinned it where it needed to be. And at some points it was overlapping my side seam more than at other points. And that's okay. You want this skirt to fit your body. Nobody else's. You're making it for you. Well, I mean, you might be making it for somebody else, but you, you get the idea. To make the detachable top piece, it was super easy, you all. I cut out all of the pattern pieces for the skirt, sewed it together, and then I just attached a waistband here, but it's a super long waistband. So that way I could just tie it in the back wherever I wanted. And it actually did work out really nicely. And I like the fact that I can wear this with my black jeans, blue jeans, you know, I can, there's so many more style options now that this is detachable. So funny story, I actually had first decided to put a zipper in that back seam so that way I could just zip it up and go, which actually would have been my preference. And I decided to use an invisible zipper that was long enough to, you know, clear my hips so that way I can get in and out and just kind of close up that back seam a little bit. Well, silly me, I cut the bottom of that zipper off and <laughs> and so when I went and unzipped it I my invisible zipper was in two pieces and I couldn't fix it so I just decided it was gonna get a waistband and I am happy with how the waistband turned out <laughs> but if you're going to put a zipper in it don't be silly like me another thing that I really want to mention here is that I really didn't even follow the Vogue 1683 instructions. I mean, I did read them, I looked at them, I saw how they were putting the different pieces together, but because this skirt is meant to be a fully lined skirt and I didn't have those additional pieces, there were a lot of the instructions that didn't even pertain. And not only that, but because I needed to actually base pieces together so that way I can kind of mess with the fit on my body, I had to do things in a bit of a different order. I mean, overall, it meant that I used half the amount of fabric that was actually required for the underskirt portion, which is exciting to me. I did use the facings, and instead of adjusting the facing pieces that they had, I just cut two and a half inches off of that curve where the facing would have been off the bottom of my actual pattern pieces and used that. I mean, I could always tape it back together if I want to make the skirt again, but that was far easier than having to make adjustments in the exact same places on the facings. And really the two biggest changes that I made in terms of construction for this pattern is that I sewed my facings together in one piece and then I sewed my skirt together. Um, although I left about that much at the hips undone at the very top. So sides, bottom, 
all constructed. I went ahead and attached my facings at that point. So that way it was one clean line. And then after I determined where the wrap was going to be, I went ahead and attached it all in at the hips. So sewed it right up at the hips, worked out nicely. I really hope that wasn't confusing. Overall, I really love this skirt. I love the asymmetry of both the overlay and the bottom one with that really interesting front kind of slit looking thing. And I really love the fabric that I made it in. This cotton's really sturdy. I could see myself wearing the bottom portion only to work. Well, maybe the top portion too, if I'm trying to be extra fancy. <laughs> I could, but I could also wear it out for drinks, wear it to special occasions, especially with that top layer. So I just absolutely love the different options that this skirt provides in my wardrobe. <laughs> the crop top that you actually see me wearing is a cashmere pattern. It's their Springfield top and it came together quickly. I actually plan on making myself another one without the contrast binding. So I'll be sure to share the information on that pattern in a different video. I do really love sewing with this beautiful Ankara fabric. I mean, it just really kind of elevates a look for me and the colors are so much fun. So I feel like they're even like kind of spirit boosting. <laughs> I have a couple more projects that are planned over the next couple of months. But check out this video right over here if you want to see other things that I've made with Ankara fabric. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. And until next time, I sincerely hope that you find joy and have a wonderful day.